Thank you very much for um, giving me, granting me the um, the award. I'm very, very pleased and um, hope this will actually have an effect on the um, dissemination of my findings. So what I do in my paper, I analyze how financial incentives affect um, fertility. And I do this by exploiting a reform in Germany in parental leave benefits. So first of all, why is this actually an interesting topic? Why do we even care about fertility? Um, when we look at um, fertility rates across education groups in most developed countries, what we see is that there are large gaps or large differences in fertility by education groups between, between um, across countries. So when we look at Germany, for example, 30% um, of um, higher educated women in Germany decide not to have children. So the completed fertility rate in Ger of German women, um, of, especially of highly educated women, is very high. When we compare this to the childlessness rate of low educated women, this is about 18%. So it's not, it's still, it's still high, but it's not as high as for the high educated. Also, when we compare the average number of children, there's a strong um, gap in fertility rates between high educated and low educated. We see a similar pattern as well for countries such as the UK or also for the US where the average level of fertility is higher but we still see these gaps. When we look at countries such as um, Sweden which actually have very, um, very, very um, um, progressive welfare states and which, which pay maternity leave benefits which offset the opportunity cost of childbearing, the gap between education group, fertility of education groups is not as big. So then might, one might wonder is why um, um, is this, um, can this just be explained by the um, differences in maternity leave benefits? What I do in this paper is I study a reform in maternity leave benefits which increased or changed the maternity benefits system from a flat rate payment system. So in which benefits were not um, changing with mother's pre-birth earnings to a benefit system in which maternity benefits were increasing in pre-birth earnings. So this basically meant that there was a strong increase in incentives for higher earning women and for higher educated women versus lower educated and lower earning women. So what I first do is I look at um, I, I, um, I look at the effects, the really short-term effects, overall fertility effects of the reform. So what I do is I study the um, changes in the monthly birth rate and what I do find is that there is a discontinuous jump in the fertility rate nine months after the announcement of the reform. So these are women who managed to conceive immediately once they knew about the reform. And this is, in, this is of magnitude of about 3% of the underlying fertility. I also see a discontinuous drop in abortion rates when the policy was announced, especially for married women. What I do in the second step is I exploit, as I, as I described earlier, I exploit the differences, differential changes across different groups in the benefits to study the effects of these increased benefits on fertility, on the decision to have a child. What I do find is that there is a significant increase in the fertility for all women above median earnings, and the effect is increasing. Um, I do find that the effect, there was also an effect for women at the end of the fertile cycle. In the overall effect, I cannot differentiate whether these women who now respond, whether they just stop their childbearing or whether they, they actually increase the num their number of children but at least by looking at women at the end of the fertile cycle. So women who are um, age 40 to 45, um, I do find a strong effect for these women. And at least for, for them, I can infer something about their completed fertility, which seems to have increased. And this was mainly driven by the probability of having a second child. So overall, my results suggest that maternity leave earnings dependent maternity leave benefits do affect fertility and also change the composition of fertility. And there seem to be an, um, an actually um, effective policy in order to reduce those gaps which we see across education groups and fertility.